Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And you read that YouTube title correctly. I was absolutely inspired by Delightful's new video. I know I'm not the only one who watched it. She has a really good habit of bringing out my inner cute because I'm making things like this and this and then I watch her video, I'm just like, I gotta, I gotta make the cute. I gotta make the cute, I want that. So we are going to be making a rainbow unicorn inspired by her video. And also, absolute disclaimer, I am coming from the tail end of a cold. So, you know, I'm, I sound a little, I sound a little, it's okay, okay? I, it's almost over, I sound worse than I actually am. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm telling you, I was a little loopy through the voiceover, so, uh, a, I lo some of you guys have said, um, I love how chaotic you are in your voiceovers, and so you know, this one's for you, because <laughs> it's chaotic, it's all over the place, but you know what, it's a fun time, it's a fun time. Um, it is going to be 3D sculpting, and I know, I'm, I know the last few videos haven't really been, uh, like, user friendly i don't i don't even know if that's the right term for it but i know they haven't been the most easy to follow so i promise the next video i do is going to be strictly sculpting just normal traditional clay so i can give you guys more tips and tricks for when you're making your own art dolls because i know these ones have been like i can't do that <laughs> i don't got that i don't i don't even know what that is <laughs> so i promise the next one will be will, will be a normal video <laughs> okay let's get started as mentioned, here is my 3D sculpt of my horse head. Now, I, I wish I had like time-lapse footage of this, but I sculpted this well before I ever decided to make this video. So unfortunately, I do not have any footage of me making it, but I wanted to do a quick turnaround just to show you, you know, that this is what the horse head looks like. I did, however, at least get some footage of me making the... <laughs> chaos <laughs> I did get some footage of me sculpting the horse's hooves which was very simple normally I make this out of instamorph but they don't always turn out exactly looking like like horse hooves or deer hooves or whatever I happen to be making at the time and I just wanted to be a little bit more accurate like I feel like that horse head was pretty accurate so I feel like you know I gotta go and be accurate with the feet too so that, that's what we're trying to do here right now even though the form factor is obviously very different than traditional sculpting, the steps are still very similar. I start out with, in this case, a ball of digital clay that I push around until I get the shapes that I'm going for. Now, especially even with horse feet, even with the little details like the feet, you best believe that I was using, say it with me folks, say it with me, it's been a minute, references, people, references. I was using a ton of references to get Get the exact angles of feet and you know I I don't think my Google history has had so many horse feet in it but you know I, I had to look from all different angles because references <laughs> that being said uh, I will always recommend go get references and I'm not just talking about anatomical and muscle anatomy and and of things that you want to create even inspiration photos could be a reference for you it can be a starting point for you to gather a better idea of what it is you want to create so I will always say references people references you just you can't go wrong <laughs> And once I've 3D sculpted uh, my objects, in this case the horse uh, feet and the head, I'm importing them into my 3D printing software. This is where the magic happens. This is where I tell my little computer printer over there, hey, hey you, I, this is what I want printed, uh, please do it. <laughs> um, I, I'm not gonna pretend like I know all the technical uh, things of it. I'm still learning 3D printing myself, so I pretty much just press buttons, things happen, and I'm like, sure, yes, that's that's how it works. <laughs> um, like, even you can see here, like, that is what the 3D printer will see when it prints, and here is my 3D printer actually printing. It's not printing the horse head because my printer was being a butt and I never knew if my printer was actually going to print it correctly so here's some old footage of me printing Krampus for my Krampus video which essentially shows the same thing it just dips itself into resin and prints uh, over and over and over again until you get your your figure 
I'm not going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about, guys. It's a brand new thing I'm learning, but here is the result, which is just so amazing to me that I can 3D scope something and then my computer tells the, a printer to print it out and then I'm holding it in my hand and I can use it for art and, and make art dolls with it and it's just it's so cool and it, it it's really keeping it like fresh and like new for me because i've been doing this art form for a while but finding new techniques and new ways to do things just keeps it interesting for me and i know it's not really viable for everybody and i'm gonna try to make it so that i balance more of you know more tutorial style videos where as these videos are more of like just hey here's my process here's where i'm at in my journey you know, let me take you along with me. That That's more what these videos are. Now, you may have noticed there's nowhere for me to attach the armature. So we're going to take care of that right now. As you can see right here, I am taking a Dremel and I'm literally just going to Dremel a hole deep inside of the horse head. Now, normally when I'm sculpting, I just... I take the tin foil ball and I make a hole in the back of that and that's how I insert my armature. A lot of you guys always ask me, how do you insert your armature? How do you attach the armature to the head? How do you attach the armature to the feet? This is how I do it. I just carve a deep hole in the back of the head and then I fill uh, that cavity with hot glue, like really high heat industrial hot glue. I don't use that cheap stuff. And I insert the armature into that and it just, it holds that armature really firmly in place it ain't going nowhere K karen K karen you're going off screen K karen no one can see hey nobody can see can you move it back up please hello thank you thank you thank you okay like i was saying i know this because sometimes when i mess up and i need to redo it it doesn't go anywhere and it's a really big pain in the butt to try to remove it so that's how i know as long as you get the good the good the good hot the good hot glue the good stuff the good stuff don't get none of that cheap like solid white hot glue that that's crap don't 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 get that get the get the good stuff okay because otherwise your stuff's gonna be coming out but with this your stuff ain't coming out it's stuck it's forever i hope you do it right the first time because otherwise it's a pain <laughs> Um, here's also me showing you the same thing, but with the feet instead. Now, um, with the feet in particular, you want to make sure when you're making a hole to insert your armature into, don't do it so close to like the outer wall of your sculpture that it's going to puncture through because otherwise you're not going to really be structurally sound. So you want to make sure you, you dig a hole into your uh, foot in this case. Just don't do it too deep that... It's gonna like plow right through because then you know, that's kind of counterproductive. <laughs> now a unicorn wouldn't be a unicorn without its horn so that is what we are going to be focusing on next. Now here I'm taking a handheld drill and I'm just slowly drilling a hole in the well as close to the center of the head as I, I can get. I can't guarantee it's actually center but it looks like it to me so we're just gonna say that it is. <laughs> and I am fitting in a wire as a um a structure and armature for the horn which is going to be made out of epoxy now i'm just using the super glue to secure it in place just long enough so that i can sculpt epoxy around it and it won't uh wiggle or, or bend or come out uh, while uh the epoxy is setting up now uh full disclaimer uh I know you're supposed to wear gloves when you're mixing it, but I don't know if you're supposed to wear gloves while you're sculpting. I've gotten varying opinions, so don't come for me in the comments saying I'm not being safe because I'm not using gloves. It, I, I, I swear it, it, it's for when you're mixing it, not for when you're sculpting. Dude, I'm a hot mess. Guys, I'm a hot mess. I sh going forward, Karen should not do voiceovers or YouTube videos when she's sick because she just rambles a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's the go for it method okay I'm, I'm just i'm just sticking sticking to my method <laughs> the next step we are going to be doing is building up the body and for this i use quilt batting and it comes in these really big long sheets um you can get them from most craft stores uh even walmart has it so um any type you can get low loft high loft i know some people have asked if there's any distinctions you can use either one they both work just fine um and i cut the very long sheets into strips and then i'll just wrap it around the body over and over and over until the body's built up to how thick i want it now something to keep in mind is 
you want to only build up the body a little bit under of what you want the final result to be because whatever fabric you're going to add is going to add additional thickness on top of that so that's something you want to keep in mind especially if you're using faux fur um whatever fabric you're going to add it, it's just going to make it a lot more thicker so you want to make sure you build up the body just a little bit under of what you actually want the final result to be but like i always say if you want chunk 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 boy, you go and you get chunk 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 boy, okay? If you want thin 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 boy, you go and you get thin 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 boy. We support all body shapes and sizes here, okay? Whatever you want, you go for it, alright? You go for it. Once the body is built up, it is now time to sew the body. And I don't really have like a very professional process for this. I just cut a piece of fabric, in this case faux fur, the entire length of the doll. And then what I'll do is I'll cut slits uh, near the legs um, for the legs to then slide through the main body fabric. And then I'll just make sure that it's cut and trimmed nice and snug around the body. And I'll just sew straight down the middle. Now, Every time I explain this, it doesn't really make sense when I say it out loud and I'm hoping the footage helps explain it better so you can see here that I'm sliding the limbs through the main body fabric because those are going to be uh, a separate fabric later on and I want to make sure that I cut a hole so that you can sew a shoulder and um, like a thigh later on because if I didn't it just it makes it harder for the the art doll to pose like say if you didn't do that and you just kind of tried to sew around it it would just make it a little bit more difficult so I do this to make sure that the legs still have free range of movement and then I also want to make sure that as you can see here I'm trimming nice and snug around the body you don't want to trim it too tight because that'll also restrict movement for the final art doll so you want to make sure you're nice and snug but you're not pulling the fabric so tight you know you want to make sure you keep that in mind because Otherwise, um, especially depending on what wire you have or what ball and socket armature you're doing, if it's too tight, your armature won't be able to bend. There will be no give, and so it'll kind of just be stiff and stuck. So that's also something to keep in mind. Hello again. It is intermission time. This is your daily reminder that if you've been thinking about doing something, if you've been thinking about doing some kind of art project and you've just been looking at it from afar like, I want to do you? But I don't know how. It's too hard. I can't do it. I, no, can't. No, hey, you stop that right now, okay? Okay. Look at me. Look at these using me in the eye holes. I, that wasn't even words. You look at me <laughs> in these eye holes, okay? I believe in you. I think you can do the thing. I know you can do the thing, okay? You just gotta take it one step at a time. You can't look at something and the bigger picture. You're gonna get overwhelmed. It's gonna be a lot. We could take it little bit by bit. Next thing you know it, look at that masterpiece right there. And you know what? It ain't even gotta be art related. If you've been thinking about doing something, some kind of project, some kind of task, and you're just like, mm, mm, mm. Hey, you go do it. You go do that thing. Okay? Because I believe in you. You believe in me. I believe in you. All right? I love you. Okay? Also, also, here's two wonderful artworks. Aren't they, aren't they adorable? Aren't they, aren't they phantasmal? Okay, okay. They're beautiful. Just mwah, mwah. Um, I always forget to mention, I have a hashtag called KP Tutorials. So if you have made an art doll from these tutorials, or you've made any type of fan art, or anything you want me to see, use the hashtag so that I can find it and share it in my YouTube videos. Okay, okay, bye, -bye. Back, back to the normal stuff.
For the limbs, I am repeating a similar step. I am cutting a piece of fabric the entire length of the limb, and then I'm just trimming it so it's nice and snug around the limb, but not too tight, or else it won't be able to bend. And then I'm just sewing, starting from the feet first, working my way up towards the body. And to join the body and leg fabric together, I am using a ladder stitch. Um, I don't know the back and forth stitch that I'm doing. I think it's called a cross stitch. It's just a basic stitch. It's just back and forth. That's the stitch I use for the legs and main body. Um, it doesn't need to be super fancy. The only time it needs to really be fancy is when you're connecting the body and leg fabric together because you want to, that to be super tight and you want that to be as hidden as possible underneath the fur so it looks all seamless throughout the body. And once all the sewing is done, it is now time to trim up the body. And for this, I am going to be using a pet shaver. And I highly recommend a pet shaver, especially if you think you're going to be doing more than a few art dolls. It just helps the process. It makes it go a lot quicker. It gets all the bulk fur off very quickly and very smoothly. And it comes with a bunch of different guards. So you can trim up different um, fur lengths throughout your art doll, depending on what you're going for. That being said, um, you're still going going to need scissors and you can still do all of this with scissors it just takes more time and you have to be a little bit more careful to make sure that um, you're not making jagged cuts that being said you're still going to need to go back in to where your pet shaver cannot get usually around the legs you want to clean that up to make sure that your ankle joints look like ankles and your elbows and knees are very prominent um, because your pet shaver just can't really get that look so the scissors help to really define that as you can see here I'm showing you the difference of a pet shaved leg versus a trimmed leg with scissors now some fur uh, this one being a case is just really particularly hard to trim with a pet shaver if it's like really dense it's going to be rather difficult that's why scissors will always come in handy and they're still very essential and after that it is time to do painting a lot of you guys have asked like why do you do painting afterwards um, it's mostly out of habit uh, it, it would make a lot more sense to paint beforehand so you don't get fur in your paint but because normally I'm airbrushing like all the different colors together at the same time including the head I usually just leave this part later and just airbrush it all at one go now the um, reason I do that is because air your faux fur will take airbrush paint different than clay resin or anything like that so the reason I do it all in one go is to make sure the colors stay as consistent as possible so that's just something to keep in mind but I'm just so used to doing it this way that even if I'm just painting it normal like you see me here I'll just fold the um, the faux fur back away from the clay piece while I'm painting it so fur doesn't get on here like in Delightful's video, I will also be painting my horse's horn gold. I'll be doing a little bit of a paler gold because it, I can overpaint very easily and I don't want to make it so that the gold looks a little bit garish or, or tacky. So I'm trying to keep it as light as possible and it just gave a really calm vibe to it because I didn't want anything um, too saturated in in this one I'm also going to be taking a little bit of pastels which I don't do very often but I wanted a very subtle look of of a coloration around the eyes and muzzles because if you look at horses um, depending on what color they are if they're a brown horse they'll have like a really dark muzzle and then dark around their eyes whereas if it's a very light colored horse they'll have pink and so I wanted to add that just to add a little bit of distinction um, between the colors and a little bit of realism And for the eyes, I just did a very pale blue color. I thought about doing like a full on rainbow in the eyes like the Lightfuls did, but because they are so small, I didn't, I didn't trust my abilities to do that. So I just went with a very pale light color. And you guys, I did try to give this one pupils, unlike my last video. I tried. I, this is the second attempt you see here. And I, I just, it wasn't looking right. It was looking a little derpy half the time. It was looking a little bit weird. So you know what? This one's also going to be a part of the no pupil gang. <laughs> Once I am done painting, I will go over everything with um, DuraClear Soft Touch Varnish, which 
it, it does what it says when this stuff dries it just gives it a nice velvety smooth finish to the touch it's just I, I love this stuff so it, it's also really scratch resistant so I, t I absolutely recommend it and then I will go over the horn hooves and eyes with Liquitex high gloss varnish like in Delightful's video, I will also be using yarn for the mane and tail of this horse. It is a technique that I absolutely love using and I use it in all my nature spirits too. I'll post a picture here. Um, but essentially what you just do is you take the yarn and you cut it into strips the entire length of the hair you want it to be and then you unravel it and it will give you four strands. Now keep in mind that when you are unraveling all of these it is going to add a lot of volume. It's going to be very voluptuous. So that's something to keep in mind. You don't want to overdo it and that your, uh, your piece gets swallowed in it. So <laughs> just keep in mind. And, and But you will also need more than you think you need. So always always make more than you think you need. But don't glue it all at the same time. Just kind of glue it in, in uh, sections and, and take your time with it so you don't overdo it. But here I am making wefts. And it is not very... Uh, it's not very clean or or fancy looking. Uh, what I just do is I take hot glue and I'll um, put hot glue on the edges and then I'll um, comb it through all the fibers to make sure all the fibers are glued together. And then I'll just cut all the ugliness off so it looks like a weft. <laughs> I think this is another example of, God, I hope the footage explains it better than my words are. <laughs> um, another trick I'd like to tell you guys is that if you take a pet brush and you brush the edges of the yarn wefts, it actually really makes it look like hair and not like a blunt cut off um, edge. Like if you just left the yarn as is, which could be a look if you want it to be a look. But in this case, I really want it to make it look like the hair because like delightful says when the hair grows out it frays at the edges and so i really want to make sure i drive that look home and it looks like the yarn is actually growing out of the horse's neck and butt <laughs> Now, unfortunately, I don't have uh, yarn in all the wonderful colors of the rainbow, so we will be airbrushing all the colors onto this white yarn. Now, I use a gravity feed dual action airbrush, and all that essentially means is I use an airbrush that you put paint in from the top. <laughs> I don't buy anything super fancy. I think my airbrush is $20 to $30. I just need something that sprays and gets really great coverage. I don't need that something that's super fine art. I'm not doing this to make like airbrushed paintings or anything. I'm just doing this to get base color on my fur or yarn in this case. So you, you, I don't want you guys thinking like I have a $200 fancy fancy pencil airbrush. I do not. <laughs> okay, we don't have time for that here. <laughs> I will absolutely break it. So I don't even trust myself to get one of those. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking me does airbrushing like texture the fur or you know does it make it crunchy does it does it do anything to it depending on what paint you're using and as long as you're keeping your layers really light and thin and you're not like you're not trying to airbrush a dark color on a light fur uh, it, it pretty much stays the same. Uh, now that being said, there always is going to be a slight textural difference, but I think it's so slight that most of the time you won't even notice and it's not really distinguishable. Uh, you want to make sure you're not trying to paint dark colors especially because that is how you'll get crunchy fur and, and textured fur. If you're trying to spray a uh, really dark color on a really light fur, it's just not really going to work. But if you're doing like pastels like this, oh, perfect. It's perfect for it. It's perfect. And now it's time to give this horse her luscious locks. <laughs> I am just taking um, a little line of hot glue on the very edge of the weft and then I'm gluing it on its backside and then I'm flipping it over so that it has a nice clean edge again this is one of those things like I think the footage speaks better than the words because I've never really had to explain this but that's what I'm doing <laughs> it gives a really nice res a result I think I think it turned out really good <laughs> Now, a lot of you guys don't know 
my love of putting drapey things and chains on art dolls. Uh, I'll insert some more pictures here. <laughs> it is a great love of mine as much as I love gluing like flowers and trinkets on things. I also like putting chains and, and drapey things. So I'm going to give uh, this unicorn a drapey set over the booty and then some drapey chains over the sides. It just, I want it to feel more I always say the magical and ethereal, <laughs> but I, I wanted to give that more fantasy vibe. So um, I think the chains added a nice touch. Now the very, very last step is I'm going to be adding um, flowers to the mane. Uh, it just, it felt like the right thing to do to really tie it all up and to give this unicorn its last little touches is to add just flowers that are coming out of its mate like come on that just is it just me that that just feels right it just sounds so unicorny so <laughs> unicorny but it it, it it feels right so i added them and i was absolutely right because it looks amazing <laughs> but that is the final step and once we're done with that this piece is complete so much if you've made it to the end of this video especially with my chaotic butt <laughs> throughout this entire video I know I was a rambly mess so I hope some of this video makes sense but thank you so much for watching the entire thing I'd also like to give a shout out to all my patrons thank you so much for your continued support you guys help me fund uh, my life and and being able to continue to make creative things so I could just never say thank you enough so Thank you. Uh, I will be trying to stay on a schedule. You know, I did a video two weeks after uh, the previous video. So hopefully we keep on this train. So we shall see. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. I hope you have a great day.